we give the drugs parallel to the heat treatment because heat amplifies the chemical activities of the drugs inside the tumor and the tumor itself gets stressed and that means also weakened. So a stressed and weakened tumor responds much better to the drug and the death rate of cancer cells from a combination therapy, heat and drug is much higher than from drug-based treatment alone. Hey everyone, welcome to the Beljansky Cancer Talk Show. In this episode titled The Gentle Way to Heal Cancer, Sylvie and I are honored to welcome a distinguished guest who is at the forefront of the innovative cancer treatments, Dr. Henning. As the founder, leading physician, and medical director at Arcadia Praxis Clinic in Germany, Dr. Henning leads a team of 25, including three medical doctors, focusing on pioneering cancer treatments. He's a respected member of the International Clinical Hyperthermia Society and the German Society of Oncology, pushing the envelope in oncology through innovative methods like hyperthermia treatment. Join us as Dr. Henning shares his insights into the future of oncology, the cutting edge treatments being developed by Arcadia Praxis Clinic, and his journey into creating a beacon of hope for those fighting cancer. Dr. Henning, thank you so much for joining us today. Please tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you got into all this, please. Hello, audience and Victor and Sylvie. It's a great pleasure and an honor to be with you tonight on this podcast. Well, how it all came about, that's uh, about my life and my biography and how I picked cancer as the topic of my professional life, or we can also say how cancer picked me. Well, it all started with uh, my interest in life sciences um, and that I wanted to understand more what life is about. So I choose to study medicine because I, I had the impression that medicine covers all the aspects of life, chemistry, biology, uh, psychology, physiology, and uh, when I was a young um, uh, scholar at, at the grammar school in, in Germany where, where I grew up, um, I, I had a good friend uh, whose father was a natura naturopathic holistic doctor, so that was like a raw model for me, a very wise man who could tell me a lot about the mysteries of life and how to treat uh, patients in, in a natural way with natural remedies. So. Those are a few details from my biography. I eventually uh, became a medical student at the University of Ulm, which is a city in the south of Germany, and um, studied medicine to learn that the kind of medicine that I was presented at uh, medical school or university was a very special interpretation of the reality that I today can call um, a reductionistic, materialistic, dualistic life view um, that leads us to the, the kind of Western world medicine that everybody knows about, that, that, that is what we get when we meet uh, a, a doctor in a Western world uh, hospital. And I honor it in every detail when it comes to emergency medicine and surgery. But there are so many things I miss, and I already missed that uh, as a medical student uh, 30, 35 years ago. And that is um, a, a basic understanding of what life is about and what a healthy organism needs to stay healthy. The scientific version of this question is called salutogenesis. Dr. Aron Aronofsky was a medical doctor and, and professor in New York in the 70s and 80s and coined this term, the science of health, as salutogenesis. And that is what, what was missing in my medical uh, uh, trainings uh, at the medical school and University of Ulm in my hometown. And what I had to learn outside uh, the university in seminars and workshops on naturopathic medicine, on detox medicine, environmental medicine, nutritional medicine, not to forget, because if you ask me how many le lectures I got in my regular curriculum about nutritional medicine, the answer would be a very sad one. Uh, it's close to zero. And I talked to so many colleagues um, in all ages, and it's still the same. Nutrition has almost no, no place uh, in the Western world uh, medical uh, study. So medical doctors, if they only go the um, standard uh, training road uh, that they are provided at their um, university is 
the art of blocking symptoms that we don't want, uh, but it's not so much about what we want to support, and it is life and health and immunity and well-being and balance. So this is what I learned outside um, the university training um, and eventually, eventually specialized on a group of diseases that we call cancer. So cancer became the center of my interest as a medical doctor more than 30 years ago, partly also because of a very private uh, uh, event in my life when my mother fell ill while I was a medical student. She was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 50. I was a medical student. She got all the treatments uh, from the oncology and, and surgical professors that were my teachers, my academic teachers with the result that she ended up with a widespread metastatic disease only three and a half years later and died at the age of 54. And that made a huge impact uh, in my life because I, I had to learn it this hard way that the kind of medicine that I just learned, my academic teachers couldn't help my mother more than uh, helping her to survive three and a half years from the day she was diagnosed. So in hindsight, I could call it a worst case. She was a worst case. There, 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 Today, I, I, know, I know so many things that we could have done or doctors could have done for her that probably had turned her, her destiny and her prognosis um, into complete remission and, and, and um, into a cure of her disease because when it was diagnosed the first time, it was still um, contained in the breast. It was not metastatic, but then a lot of things happened that belonged to the standard procedures that did not solve her problem and and um, yeah the sad start the sad end is what I already mentioned that she died at the young age of fifty four so that was a game changer in my life um, where I I had to learn that what I was taught at med school is obviously a very limited uh, part of reality and there is so much more to the right and to the left of what what we were told at med school so that it, that's where my journey. Like it also sounds like you have a very, very powerful reason of why you're doing it as well yeah. as from like, and I think that's super important when, especially going down this journey of like finding the differences and finding those cures and things like that are super critical, especially. And I wanted to get your thoughts on what the difference between the mainstream or the Western oncology versus the holistic version of the oncology. So basically the difference between the Western world oncology versus holistic oncology. I'd love to get yeah. your thoughts on that. Yeah, so let me repeat again, what we call Western world medicine follows a reductionistic and materialistic primer. And that primer became the standard at the end of the 19th century when medicine and industrialism fell into the era of materialism. And it gave us a lot of advantages. Apparatuses were invented and techniques were invented, surgery, radiology, um, diagnostical tests were invented. So a lot of, 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 of new things came with materialism and reductionism. Reductionism is, means that we reduce a very complex reality to a portion of the reality that we try to handle. Um, and that is, on one side, uh, get, uh, something that gave us enormous benefits, but on the other side, we lost the concept of vitality. We lost the concept of Health is a state of balance. Health is not the absence of a disease. Health is not the absence of cancer cells. Health is not the absence of bacteria in the human body, but health is the balance between my organism and some deviating cancer cells that my body allows to produce every day, a few hundred. And as long as I'm in control of these few hundred cancer cells that happen to come into existence in my body, I call it healthy. And from the moment on, this is out of control and the cancer cells develop into a lump and eventually threaten my life. I call it a disease. But the concept of balance is the primer that got lost 150 years ago. And now your question, what does holistic medicine do? We remember that there is something that, that is called the balance of power or the healthy uh, homeostasis of the organism, another beautiful Greek word to, that describes the balance of power and that we need to guide the organism that has fallen out of balance back into its natural state, which is balance and health. And that is not only done uh, by blocking the symptoms. And of course, oncology is a very, very complex discipline and, and the treatment of oncological 
patience requires a complex toolbox with many tools. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't need surgery and radiotherapy and, and diagnostics and all. I, I don't have a full covering alternative to mainstream medicine, but I have many, many tools to add to mainstream medicine. And that is what we call complementary um, uh, medicine or integrative medicine, where we um, choose the best methods for each patient individually um, and find the best way to, el to eliminate um, the, the dangerous tumor, if we now speak about oncology, but at the same time care for the patient's self-healing capacity that uh, is uh, represented in the patient's immune system and in metabolic um, uh, metabolic balances um, that need to be readjusted in somebody who has developed such a, a drastic can disease you, as a can you describe the differences between the balancing you, you talked about the balancing of the the body and what that looks like and having that holistic level can you go yeah. into what exactly that means for someone yeah. Like for what? Sure. What, is, what are they balancing? I guess is yeah. the question. Yeah. Um, let's take inflammation as one of the key drivers of most diseases that worry us today in Western world countries and rich countries. Uh, inflammation drives high blood sugar, diabetes, uh, autoimmune diseases, all kind of metabolic diseases, uh, metabolic syndrome, obesity. Um, but also dementia, Alzheimer, depression, and last not least, all the cancerous diseases. All these diseases are connected to something that we call inflammation or chronic inflammation. So what does Western world medicine do with inflammation? Take an Advil, take an ibuprofen, block the inflammation and keep on eating the, the wrong food and keep on living the wrong lifestyle. I don't care, just take the anti-inflammatory pill. That would be a very coarse version, of course, of the Western world approach. Uh, take the pill, goodbye, next patient, please. So what is the holistic approach? It's tell me, how do you live? How much do you sleep? What food do you eat? How much do you worry? How do you take care of your worries? How do you detoxify? How do you take care of your liver, your kidney function, your gut flora, etc.? That's the holistic way. And by looking at all these systems, we find the reasons for inflammation. For instance, inflammatory food, for instance, too little sleep, for instance, too many worries and, and too few techniques to balance stress. And from a holistic perspective, we need to change the patient's lifestyle and teach the patient how to eat healthy food. And then we don't need the Advil or the ibuprofen. So practically now that you are running a famous clinic, cancer clinic in Germany, first of all, what is the name of the clinic and how is the uh, experience going to be different for the patient compared to uh, wherever they can be treated? Welcome to a new chapter in men's health. Prostable offers a natural boost for men over 50 concerned with maintaining their prostate health. The capsules are packed with 310 milligrams of Pau Pereira and 60 milligrams of Rawolfia vomitoria, ensuring potent support for your prostate. Experience broad spectrum support with safe and non-prescription ingredients, all backed by science. Plus, enjoy the added benefit of reduced nighttime bathroom visits, helping you achieve a more restful and uninterrupted sleep. Discover real stories and transformative experiences. Visit our website to see what others are saying about Prostable. Take charge of your well being with confidence and feel better naturally. Discover Maison Beljansky, sourced from nature perfected by science. Enjoy a 15% discount on your first purchase with code EP2. Prostable, where your health journey begins. Yeah, thank you, Sylvie, for that question. So the clinic that I founded some 20 years ago um, has the name Arcadia Clinic. Arcadia is a beautiful landscape in, in uh, Greece, and it's mentioned in the old poems of, of Greek antique uh, poetry as the ideal place, a paradise-like place where man and the gods live in harmony. So that inspired me to pick that name and call my clinic Arcadia Clinic. And I founded it some 20 years ago. 
So um, what do we do here? We start with an individual assessment. We sit down for hours with patients with in, in the beginning of the procedure to take a new patient in and learn as much as possible from the patient's medical history and his, his or her biography to understand what happened. Uh, the, the genetic aspect of, of cancerous diseases in adulthood is very limited. We talk about 5%. So what are the other 95%? Lifestyle, everything we did in our life. Um, and so we need to learn what, what opened the door for cancer. Cancer did not fall into the patient's body like a falling star from outer space. It is inside the body from the first day we are born in, in microscopical forms of, of cells. It's even stitched in our genome in form of pre-oncogenes. So we all live with a program that we, if, we, if we wake it up, develops into the disease called cancer. So we need to understand what woke up the cancer program that lives in all of us and what can we do to make it to fall asleep again. In the beginning of the procedure, most patients need a surgeon to cut out the lump or, or, or the tumor that threatens one's life. That's a sad truth, and I highly recommend my patients to, um, to take advantage of the fantastic uh, uh, possibilities with surgical treatments. It would be, it would be irresponsible to believe that uh, tumors um, that show up in, in the size of one or two inches that's when a patient normally goes and sees the doctor and tells the doctor, hey, something is wrong. I feel this lump. Could you please check me? Um, and at that size, it's almost impossible to reverse it with only naturopathic remedies. That would be stupid and dangerous to believe that I could turn around a, a, a two-inch large a tumor in my colon, in my breast, in my lungs, only with naturopathic medicine. At least I have never seen that that works. So we need a multidisciplinary approach. We need a surgeon. We need diagnostics. Um, and surgery uh, plays an important role in oncology uh, in the first stages. Um, but that's not the kind of patients we see. To get back to your question, Sylvia, what, what do we do at our clinic? What is the difference? Patients who, who call us are, in most cases, in a stage three or four of their disease and that's a stage where surgery has very, very limited um, benefits to offer. In most cases, no benefits at all. So surgery is not, is not on the screen any longer. And what we do, as already said, is we sit down and learn a lot from the patient's medical history. And then we do an in-depth assessment with many biological laboratory tests to find out the weaknesses of our patients. How is the gut microbiome? The gut microbiome is in intensively connected to our immune system. So we have all the reasons to understand how, how good or bad the gut microbiome is and how we can repair it. Does the patient have leaky gut syndrome or an impairment of, of gut flora with parasites and yeast overgrowth? We do toxicology tests. We do all sorts of vitamin and mineral tests and, and standard laboratory tests to find out the weaknesses. And then we also uh, incorporate a, a specific setup of tests that we do with circulating tumor cells or tumor biopsies, probes that we send to a special laboratory for individual testing. That means we I, want to... I, I assume that all this testing leads to some special procedures that they don't find somewhere else. So that's why people travel to you is to get those, uh, those treatments. Yes, and, and, and the testing, because believe it or not, the standard... Uh, paradigm in Western world oncology is still based on so-called guidelines and uh, the uh, mainstream oncology has has begun to do more individual tests to find out for instance in breast cancer is it a hormonal positive or hormonal negative uh, type of breast cancer is there a herceptin receptor yes or no but those are only a few markers of many hundreds that could be tested and um, since uh, about four or five years back in time, we do, as long as we can, if a, if a biopsy is available or doable or the patient allows us to do a biopsy, we ask uh, a laboratory in, in uh, the vicinity of our clinic in Dusseldorf um, to do a complete gene analysis. 20,000 genes can be analyzed in a so-called Panther chip test-based 
biopsy test. And that um, enormous database that we receive after three weeks from this uh, um, uh, gene test uh, helps us to understand all the specific characteristics of this particular patient. Um, modern oncology has understood, and there is no difference between us complementary alternative doctors and mainstream doctors, we, we, we read the same uh, science literature and the science literature has told us that every patient has her own, his own type of cancer. There are almost no two types of cancer that are completely alike. So we have all the reasons to understand what is Peter's prostate cancer in comparison to Thomas' prostate cancer. We call it prostate cancer, but they're they can be totally different. That means the drug that works for Peter does not work for Thomas. And the drug that is mentioned in the guideline list might be completely wrong for both of them. Just because the statistics says in most cases, this is the most successful uh, treatment does not mean that an individual always follows the statistics. So that is the step uh, that we do in individualized testing. And based on these test results, we combine the drugs that we use. Okay. And beyond the drugs, what are the modalities are you offering at your clinic? Yes. Um, I have to take a deep breath because there's so many things we do and I, <laughs> uh, I have to um, uh, make a plan how I proceed now by telling you what we do. Well, well start with what is the most is unique. What... Yes. Start with the most I... unique or what is the most in demand for, for, for let's say, for Americans traveling to your clinics, yep. because I understand you have a fairly a number of, of American citizens choosing to yes. uh, make all the trip all the way, all the way to Germany to come to see you, right? Yep. So, yes. So the headline is non-toxic treatments, as far as possible, non-toxic treatments. And how can we treat cancer uh, with non-toxic treatments? Well, by adding a few techniques and tools that amplify the power of the drugs that we use. If we use less toxic drugs, then we need to make them stronger in, in another way. And these ways are, number one, heat. Heat treatment called hyperthermia, the Greek word that expresses to overheat a region uh, in order to harm it and to sensitize it for the effect that comes from the drug. So heat is a perfect synergy partner together with the drugs um, to make the drug effect stronger it's a it's a treatment amplifier hyperthermia and we do it in various ways we do it uh, as moderate fever therapy where the patient is exposed to infrared light for a couple of hours and we reach a body core temperature that is a like fever temperature comparable to a fever reaction from a, a, a virus infection and it's safe it's controlled, the doctor is with the patient, the nurse is with the patient, the patient is connected to a patient monitor where we, um, where we uh, check the patient's life parameters continuously. I've done it for 20 years now and I, I can assure everybody who listens to this podcast tonight that it's an absolutely sh safe procedure. Um, and we give the, the, the drugs parallel to the heat treatment because heat amplifies the chemical activities of the drugs inside the tumor and the tumor itself gets stressed and that means also weakened so a stressed and weakened tumor responds much better to the drug and the the, the death rate of cancer cells uh, from a combination therapy heat and drug is much higher than from drug-based treatment alone we also use special devices with radio waves to overheat a region or the tumor alone on, on our website, uh, you can see the devices that we use, the whole body hyperthermia device and the local hyperthermia devices using uh, radio waves. Another smart way to reduce toxicity and raise efficacy is what is called insulin potentiation therapy, a method that was developed in Mexico some 80 years ago um, by a Mexican military surgeon with the name Dr. Garcia Perez. And he did it first with uh, patients uh, who suffered from uh, an infectious disease called syphilis. And syphilis at that time was a big problem because the antibiotics, first there were no antibiotics at all. And then the first antibiotics that eventually came to the market 
were not very powerful and had enormous side effects. So Dr. Perez combined antibiotic treatment with insulin to lower the blood sugar before he gave the antibiotic and made the antibiotic treatment much more efficient and was able to cure patients with syphilis. That was a breakthrough uh, in, in the treatment of syphilis at his time. It was the, the end of the, the 1930s. And then 10 years later, he continued to combine chemotherapy treatments for oncological patients with insulin. And he lowered the patient's blood sugar with an IV injection of a tiny little bit of insulin. And this tiny little bit has an enormous effect. It can lower the blood sugar within 10, 15 minutes. Um, and you have to control it very carefully to not fall too low in blood sugar. That's uh, what the doctor needs to learn, uh, uh, how to, how to uh, guide the patient through this procedure. But there is a certain uh, level of blood sugar that is called the therapeutic uh, optimal level of blood sugar. And when we reach that level, we administer the IV uh, drugs um, uh, and our experience and the, the Academy of, of IPT doctors experience um, since the 1940s is that this, this combination is very, very successful. It's very little known out there in the big world of oncology because it, it was used in the 50s and 60s and in the 70s it fell more and more into an academic slumber and nobody... Uh, was interested any longer in larger hospitals. So it lives today in, in complementary alternative clinics uh, and in, in an academy uh, for IPT uh, trained doctors um, uh, around the world. We are around 100 IPT doctors that I'm in, in uh, communication with. And, and that's it. That's, that's not so many, uh, Hugh. <laughs> uh, look at the, the need of the world uh, in... in uh, in, uh, in, and in and since you started based on your training as a, I mean, conventional doctor, and then you evolved into becoming the world of holistic medicine, uh, what um, what do you see at the level of the patients? What what are the benefits for the patients to go the holistic route? Yeah, um, well better quality of life and a good chance to live a long and good life with a little bit of cancer, to make cancer a manageable disease that allows the patient to thrive. That is our goal for patients in a stage of metastatic disease. I, I did not mention yet that uh, one of the benefits of IPT is that, that we can reduce the dosages to around 20, 25, sometimes lower than 20% of the original doses. And that gives an enormous benefit in terms of quality of life and side effects. We all know that chemotherapy in solid tumors, in solid carcinomas, cancer, cancerous diseases, has limited effects. And the limitation comes from the toxicity. It can be used a certain amount of times uh, to reduce the, the cancerous masses. But the longer you use it, the more you, you push ca cancer cells into resistance and you lower the patient's quality of life, and the day comes where the bone marrow is so heavily intoxicated that you cannot continue with uh, chemotherapy. That's, that's the, the sad uh, truth uh, that many of our patients have experienced. And then what can you do? So IPT, insulin potentiation therapy, offers a new uh, therapy strategy because it's not so toxic. Better quality of life, almost no toxicity, and our experience is that it works very, very well. Um, I cannot show the audience controlled studies because a clinic like ours and all the other clinics that I'm in contact with, we're too small to conduct controlled studies in a dimension that a university clinic or a cancer center like the MD Anderson in Houston could do. I mean, if we compare uh, the companies or the, the sizes of the hospitals, it's pretty obvious why we can't do that. But I have good cases. And a good case from, from uh, the last weeks or months is, for instance, we I can mention two patients with lymphomas who came to us uh, and were heavily pretreated with standard of care in their country's um, expert centers. One gentleman from London and a lady from Estonia uh, treated at the, the uh, university clinic in, in Tallinn. 
and they both got a, a, a reoccurrence very fast after after their mainstream treatments. And in the case of this gentleman from London, he came to us after 12 years of standard therapies with more than 100 radiations that he went through for his lymphomas, more than 100 single radiation events. And his oncologists in, in London told him that he had reached the end of the road, that there was nothing to offer. And um, he his entire body was covered with a skin form of lymphoma, a very rare type of B-cell lymphoma that looks like an eczema, but it's it's a B-cell lymphoma. It's a, a malignant disease of the lymph, uh, the lymph cells, lymph node cancer. And I was not sure if I could turn this around, but he asked me to do it and he said, I have nothing to lose. And we said, okay, we give it all we have. And uh, today he is in remission. It's, it's an amazing story uh, with uh, treatments that, that were non-toxic. Toxicity was never the problem for, uh, for this patient, not for the others too. And, and the, the other lady from Estonia with, with um, classic uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, also went into a remission after three weeks um, after a relapse she had um, uh, from the mainstream uh, treatments and she recovered. She did not only experience a remission of her lymph node tumors, the lymphomas, she also experienced a recovery uh, of her poor blood values, of her weight loss, of her weakness and felt stronger after the treatment here compared to how she arrived. And these are my success stories that, um, um, that, that motivate me to carry on with, with uh, what I do. Um, and so um, the benefits You're... are obvious, less toxicity, a good quality of life, and obviously uh, a good chance to get the disease under control. Do I heal cancer? I want to say that actively before anybody asks me, no, I'm not in the position of healing cancer, but can I add a benefit to my patient's life? Definitely, yes. And what is the benefit? For a longer time, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, that depends on so many factors, control of the disease with excellent quality of life. That is my goal. Yes, that's already a lot. Is there uh, some other information that you are share, uh, sharing in your book that uh, uh, everybody, our listeners, should, should know about? And please, show us your book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sylvie, that's my pride here. Uh, I, I wrote the German version uh, three years ago and uh, uh, a year and a half ago, Chelsea Green, publisher in Vermont, translated it and uh, brought it to the market under the title holistic cancer medicine integrative strategies for a new approach to health and healing uh, you can order it everywhere where you can order books um and, um, and i have to say that we have some of your books at maison Beljansky, so if people can when we know about this can reach to maison Beljansky and buy buy some of the books because so we have manhattan just please have a look at Maison Beljansky, downtown Manhattan. And there uh, we have that. some of your books since your excellent presentation uh, at Jacksonville. So tell us more about, uh, about your, your books. Ever wondered about a supplement just for you? Introducing Wuma Bell, made for the unique health needs of women, the natural choice for everyday wellness. Our formula, carefully picked, deeply researched for real results, packed with the power of Pau Pereira, exclusive green teas, and Rawolfia extract. Every capsule is a step towards better health. Hear from those who felt the difference. Visit our website, masonbeljansky.com. Woma Bell. Feel the natural difference because you matter. Unveil the power of nature through Maison Beljansky, sourced from nature, perfected by science. Get 15% off your first purchase with code EP2. Feel better naturally. The book has, uh, is about 350 pages. So what are the, mo the most important things? Well, we talked a lot of bio about biology and how to intensify 
Um, less toxic drugs we use, naturopathic drugs like turmeric and vitamin C and mistletoe and resveratrol from grapes and what else, a, a large variety of, of uh, plant-based anti-cancer drugs in, in pharmaceutical quality and injectable form. Um, we amplified with heat treatment, hyperthermia and insulin potentiation, oxygen, pulsed electromagnetic field, etc. And then there is something I would, I would add to now uh, that you asked me about, and that is the psychological emotional part. Extremely important. We're not only biological beings, we are highly spiritual and emotional beings at the same time. And, and there is no moment in our life where these two aspects, the spiritual emotional part of our life and the physical bio, bio, biological part of our life are, are not in, in communication. The truth is that we always act as a whole being where spirit and emotions interact with biology and physiology. And that was, um, the, the, the basis of the understanding of the nature of man for thousands of years. If we go back into the history of medicine, to Egypt, to Greece, to India, to China, the, the old schools of, of medicinal uh, philosophy knew that the human being is both a spiritual and a biological living uh, phenomenon and that these realms uh, interact with each other. Then materialism came and we believe that, that these two aspects of our life take place in different universes and that there is a wall in between and that the spirit does not communicate with the body. But <laughs> in the year, around the year 2000, so about 25 years ago, the academic discipline called neuroimmunology or psychoneuroimmunology became acknowledged worldwide and now we have institutes for psychoneuroimmunology in every major university around the world inclusive the western world so we are kind of reinvent the wheel we understand that spirit and body interact so we're at least in some corners of the academic world we we slowly get out of reductionism and and, and uh, materialism uh, in fact germany requires uh, that a psycho-oncologist is on board at the clinic that wants to be certified as an expertise center in oncology. So every oncological center of expertise in Germany has to have a psycho-oncologist on board. That's a new rule and I welcome that, of course. So psycho-oncology takes a big place in our uh, approach. We have um, classes about meditation, about relaxation techniques, about balancing the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system that controls our stress uh, uh, adaptation reaction. We talk about uh, purpose of life. We talk about spirituality. We talk about how our uh, emotions can be blocked and how we can express uh, suppressed emotions. I, I highly recommend my patients to read Kelly Turner's book, uh, radical Remission and Radical Hope. For those who have not heard about Kelly Turner, she's a PhD health scientist, uh, uh, got her PhD from the, the uh, University of Southern California for her field study with cancer survivors that survived because of out-of-the-box uh, treatments. And she asked more than a thousand cancer survivors that survived because of treatments that were not um, based on surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, what they did in order to survive. So unexpected recoveries, unexpected remissions. And she found 10 healing factors. That's what she, what the books are about, Radical Remission and Radical Hope by Kel, um, Kelly Turner. And I had a great pleasure to meet with Kelly Turner last year in Florida on a, on a patient conference in West Palm Beach. And since then, we are in close uh, contact. Uh, there, uh, she, she started a, a health revolution with uh, uh, a... Um, a movement called Radical Remission Teachers, and she trains teachers to educate patients in these techniques that she found out empirically in her field study. So what are these 10 factors? Three are biological, seven are spiritual emotional. The biological factors were changing your food, practicing more physical exercise, uh, incorporate uh, naturopathic drugs, naturopathic plant-based anti-cancer uh, remedies, and the other seven factors were deepening your spirituality, release suppressed emotions, embrace social contact, 
seek for more happiness, uh, deepen your spirituality, spiritual, emotional, psychological factors. Seven out of 10 survival factors were emotional and spiritual. So uh, we honor that and we, in the, off, in the morning, it's more about infusion and hypothermia and insulin potentiation therapies. And in the afternoons, we have classes about meditation and how to find uh, the purpose of life again uh, and to find the message, to understand the message uh, that this disease comes with. And most patients can find the message. In the beginning, it seems a little dared to raise the question. Can you imagine there is a, a message hidden in all the suffering and in the disease that you just have been confronted with or have been confronted with for already some years? Can you imagine that there is a message for you hidden in all this suffering? And after a while, in the peaceful surrounding of this clinic and in the spiritual atmosphere of this clinic, most patients find the message and pick up new ideas how to recalibrate their life in order to gain more strength and, and overcome the disease also emotionally and spiritually. It looks like a real odyssey. You are inviting your patients uh, to uh, in your German clinic. Yes, yes, it's uh, well with a good end. Yeah, the Odyssey is uh, is an adventurous uh, saga from Melissa, who who had to to do uh, courageous things. Yes, you have to be courageous to to uh, go through this journey. But um, I'm I'm. I'm blessed with patients who are not only highly motivated and knowledgeable, they're also very courageous. Uh, and they show their courage by coming from more than 50 different countries to this uh, little village in, in the German woods uh, uh, called Bad Emstal, right in the middle of Germany, and, and uh, start this, this uh, healing journey. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't offer a cure, I offer a healing experience uh, with more biological ingredients, but if the patient is open, also um, spiritual and emotional experiences that help the body to heal. For me, healing is a spiritual concept. Cure is more on the biological level, but to heal, to get whole again, in other words, whole and healing is closely connected in our language. Um, so healing is a spiritual journey. Absolutely. I, yep, I totally agree. And uh, Sophie, is there anything else you want to say there? No, um, no, okay. I'm I find the, all this fasc fascinating and I'm sure that people want to hear again the n name of the clinic and uh, how to reach Dr. Henning. So. Yes, and but before okay. we sign off, I want to say, Dr. Henning, um, is there, it, it, what would be the one key takeaway that you want the audience to go away and say, hey, after everything you listen to, what would be the one key takeaway that you would take to the audience after listening to everything you just said? Be courageous, have faith, and don't believe your prognosis. Believe your diagnosis, but don't believe the prognosis somebody tells you or you find online. Make it your healing journey and, and learn how to get better and believe that you can do it. I love that. I love that. That's great. Thank you. And can you please tell the audience, yes, please, like how to, uh, what your um, clinic is called, um, how to find you and get in contact with you? Yeah. So a good, a good way to, to prepare for the journey is again, this book, those $20 are a good investment for everybody. And it's also for prevention. It's a, a, an excellent gift to somebody that you want to, to help to not get the disease. I mean, we have all the reasons, healthy people have all the reasons to read this book because obviously we live a pro cancerous lifestyle uh, with the sad statistics that, that we're confronted with. Uh, let me just mention a few numbers that so that everybody, even the healthy ones that listen to this podcast, understand that we all have reasons to understand cancer better. Um, we're heading towards a 50% lifetime risk to develop a cancerous disease in the Western world countries. We're at the moment at around 40% and by 2040, it will be 50% lifetime risk for cancer for everybody in developed industrial countries. So that's why this book is needed um, and, and the knowledge within. So learn how to eat healthily, learn how to balance the stress in your life, learn how to work out in a healthy way so, so your body gets all, all um, 
the stimuli and the, the food and the, 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 um, the ingredients is that you need for a healthy life. Um, and how do you find us here at Arcadia Clinic? Well, you look up Arcadia Clinic in Germany, Arcadia, Ar uh, yeah, I, I, I hope, um, Victor, you will mention the, uh, the name in the, in the subtitle of the podcast. Um, or you look up my name, Dr. Henning Salpe. There's only one Dr. Salpe in Germany. That's me. So it's easy to find me. Um, in, and um, new patients are welcome to send us an email. You find our website and then there is a contact uh, uh, email that you can use to send us uh, your, your submission. Uh, then my secretary, Tanya, will send you a questionnaire. We ask you to fill it out and send it back to us together with your medical documentation. Uh, we're three medical doctors here at Arcadia Clinic, so my colleagues and I will have a careful look uh, on the material that you send us. And then we invite you to a first video consultation where we talk to each other and find out if, if we are a good match, if we want to, to work together and there's free this first video consultation is free of charge for, for new applying patients. And um, if we then agree that we want to cooperate with each other, we send you a, a, a treatment proposal. Uh, and in average, the stay for patients with uh, cancerous diseases is three weeks. That's what we recommend. In some cases, it can be longer than three weeks, but three weeks is the average time that we want our patients to invest. Okay. Wow. We do follow up. Now, uh, after after the three weeks stay here, we we um, sent the patient home with a, a, a take home package of naturopathic drugs and recommendations, and then we do follow ups based on video on Zoom or or Skype video consultations to help the patient to to continue to keep the good result alive. And some patients want to come back, need to come back after a certain amount of time, and that is very different based on individual needs and possibilities um, in, a, in a stage four, um, it might be necessary to come back after three to six months and, and, and do a, a maintenance treatment, a redo of the treatments. Um, and there is no rule for everybody. This is on the, what, what we have to find out on, on an individual basis with, with each patient. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Henning. Thank you so much for joining today. That's all we have time for today. I know we can go on for that for seven more hours. I guarantee it. So thank you so much for joining today. This is the Beljansky Cancer Talk Show. Please, uh, everyone, follow, subscribe below, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you, Victor. Thank you.